having a PMA, like positive mental attitude is so key because it just helps you overcome anything, not just in dating, but life in general. What are your boundaries? And by knowing what your boundaries are, you're not gonna accept disrespect in any element of your life. I'm not gonna let somebody who doesn't, has not developed what I have, ruin what I have developed. What's up camera? So my first question for you, a guy cannot take it anymore and he's about to just break up. Like there is no other choice. How do you think he should go about that? He's gonna have to just understand that he has a, a bit of a mental challenge that he's gonna have to deal with. Meaning that if he's someone who hasn't been used to a breakup before, then going through a breakup is gonna be a challenging obstacle. Now I call it an obstacle because due to the fact that you, you're you just, it's a novel thing, you're gonna go through some emotional pain. You're gonna go through a whole lot of emotion stuff. Absolutely, so you're gonna go through definitely some emotional pain. You're gonna go through a lot of just thinking of the past, like reminiscing of the past. And when that happens, it becomes harder to want to break up. So there has to be a lot of justification as to why you want to break up, because the one thing you don't want to do is you want to break up too soon, right? Now, based on the context you provided, Axel, that is just going straight into this person just can't take it anymore, then you have to go up to your partner. You got to let her know like, hey, you know what? It's not working for me. And I really cherish the times that we were together but I think it's time for me to move on. I'm gonna be packing up my stuff. If you like live together or you say you meet her in a public area, it's better to do it in public. You don't wanna do it in private uh, to do a breakup. So it's just better to let her know like, hey, you know what? I really cherished, the time, or cherished our time together and it's time for me to move on. I wish you all the best and I'm gonna move on and I and we're gonna go forward from there. So how do you know if it's too soon or not? There's definitely some criteria you wanna look into. Like number one, you wanna think about does this woman that I was with, that I've been dating, or I've been even married to, uh, has she been respecting me? Has she been following the kind of leadership that I've been providing for her? Is she? Does she? Does she look at look look at me in a way that she feels like she can really honor my presence, and she feels like she can be authentic and and be really herself around me? Because women they tend to be very emotional creatures. So like one day they're excited, one day they're you know they're sad, and the other day they're like you know they remember something from like 10 years ago that you told them and they're like, you remember when you told me this? I'm so mad at you for that. So in that situation, it's a bit of a chaotic environment. So uh, what a man can do is really have her lessen her chaotic uh, behavior and make her feel just more comfortable in her own graceful femininity because femininity, part of it is that up and down. And that's natural and women cannot get over that. But what a man can do with his masculinity is to really give her that like kind of peace and, and logic and just give her that like comfort where she can be herself and not she's not gonna be judged, right? So if that if that is doesn't exist anymore, if that doesn't if she if he doesn't feel like that's present where she's really like having a good conversation with him, like there's so many things that go into this. Like, do you do you guys have conversations without leading into arguments? Like, can she be logical and be empathetic and be respectful about what's going on in your mind? So if she, for example, and there's a lot of other things too, like what's warranted for automatic breakup for me is let's just say my partner cheated on me. That's an automatic breakup. I think that's the easy one yes. though. But let's talk about that. Yes. Uh, I've never had to experience that. I think that's right. one of the worst things that could happen to anyone. Right. But how in that situation would you act or like what has been your experience or like the people that you know, like what would be the best case scenario? She cheats on you or you cheat because mm -hmm. also like we have women that watch the show. Mm -hmm. So how should that play out? Just to go, because you said like that's the easy, like one of the easy ways of knowing. See, here's the thing. Even though it's technically easy for us to stand on this podcast and talk about it, there are a lot of men and women that still allow it to happen and continue to allow it to happen because they don't have the emotional, they don't have the emotional willpower to like get over it and to move on from it. And when I say move on means like you s separate yourself. That's what at least I would do. And I'm sure you would do that as well. I've never had to deal with this, but I have seen levels of disrespect from my partners before in public. So I was like, well, this is not really right for me. Here's the thing, the, the foundation to all of this, whether it's cheating, whether it's disrespect, whether it's her yelling at you in public and you're sick of it or her flirting with other guys in front of you and it's like blatantly disrespectful, it's, it's the lack of self-identity that men have, the lack of self-identity. So if men don't understand their boundaries, their value, their code of life that they follow you, standards, all of a sudden they start to accept things and they start to, they start to just say, you know what, well, that's just who she is. So I'm just not gonna really do much. I'm not gonna really 
look too much into it because it's ultimately her personality and I just have to accept it because she's a wonderful person and because she's good looking and she has been, you know, she's good to me on these segments, but over in the here, she's not that good. So I'm going to just, you know, go pro and con. And I'm going to say that over it's it, the benefit outweighs the cons. right? Yeah. And that's so complicated because every person is different. So yeah. Yeah, I think it goes back to what you said of identity yes. and you having your own standards and then finding a way to communicate that. But it's very difficult. It's like way easier to talk about it than when you're actually having those emotions and all the history that you have with the person, then that moment, whatever you're feeling. To be honest, I don't really know how to go about that mm -hmm. in the best way possible. One, I haven't had that much experience. I was married for almost 10 years and then I got divorced and that was terrible. Right. Just having to deal with that, it's easier to talk about it when you are just saying, yeah, this is what I would do. But then when you're in the middle of that situation, it's almost like your brain cannot even process, like, this is what I should do. It's right. you're full with emotions and so many things are happening. So what do you think people could do to bring that down? To me, I would just go to the gym and try to like get my anger and bad energy out at the gym. So right. what do you feel about that? Axel, that's a very good point. I would say definitely exercise helps significantly. So I had a recent breakup at the time of the filming of this podcast. And for me, it was it was tough because actually I was out of the country and uh, <laughs> I was on vacation technically and the breakup happened. So, you know, breakups being on vacation, I mean, can you imagine that must be really tough for people? So what I did is I actually did breath work and breath work is part of the spiritual community that I learned and one of the great things about it is that it helps you exhale tra trauma of any sort. Trauma from the past, you know, trauma that you're dealing with on a consistent basis or even like consci consciously you're dealing with it. That helps significantly. So for me, what I did is when I broke up with my ex-girlfriend, I realized that I had to just get this energy out. So I think what's important is to realize like you do need to have standards, value system. You need to have a self-identity. And I tell all my clients through my monthly coaching that I give them a set of questions that they need to follow in order for them to be prepared, not just for breakups, but also when they meet a woman. Because here's the thing, I was talking to a prospective client and this one pros prospective client who never, he didn't actually sign up with me because he was just like all over the place. And I wanted to be with someone who's really ready to work with me, right? He showed me, Axel, a list of red flags that this woman why he should not date her. He's still with her. He's still entertained being with her. And then when I reached out to him, I said, so we're on a conference call. And I told him, why are you still with this girl? And he's like, well, you know, she does all these great things for me, like cook and clean. And she's nice to me here and there. But then she has a list of all these red flags. And they were like pretty bad red flags. And I asked him, well, why do you still follow that? Now, I couldn't, I, I even if I told him, you got to work on your self-identity, he's not able to process that. He was still more interested on being hurt than being able to be independent from all the negativity that he was feeling. He was not ready to move on from this, right? So so he was more interested in being hurt and staying in a hurt state? Absolutely. Subconsciously, yes. Consciously, he doesn't know that. Consciously, he won't admit that either. But on a subconscious that's, that's level... That's very interesting. You yeah. know, that's very interesting. And I can relate to that because like, there are moments where if you have been hurt, the easy thing is to stay in that hurt for a little bit because you're almost like soothing yourself by telling you that you have been hurt or you're in this terrible situation and you're almost like putting all the blame on external circumstances, right. other people, problems that are happening. But it's really hard to take ownership of, hey, this is your fault, but you also have the key and you have the way out. It's just like freaking hard to do it. Absolutely. So here's the thing, going to the gym helps. Going out to the movies, it helps. Eating your favorite dinner, it helps. I had a mentor who helped me during the process of, of the breakup. I reached out to him and I told him, hey, here's what I'm, what I'm dealing with. And I actually handled it pretty well. I mean, it was a very a sad moment for me, but I was able to handle it relatively well. I was very surprised, I was very proud of myself because I have overall a PMA, which stands for Positive Mental Attitude. That's what one of my clients just told me recently. He's like, hey, Cameron, you have great PMA. And he's from the military, so I didn't even know what PMA stood for. So once he explained that to me, I realized Having a PMA, like positive mental attitude is so key because it just helps you overcome anything, not just in dating, but life in general, right? Any kind of obstacles. So if you supplement exercise, you supplement it with like enjoying the things that you love to do. Like for me, 
I love to go out and I love to socialize with people. That helps me get my mind off the breakup because what am I gonna do? Stay in my Airbnb in Mexico and twiddle my thumbs the whole time and say, oh, poor me, like that's worse. And then I start thinking about all this negative stuff. Yeah, I'm the opposite. I need to go into my dark room and just <laughs> like be, like we, we joke, Abraham and I, like yeah. whenever things are going bad, I enter this dark Lord <laughs> energy. <laughs> Yeah, it's because I get good energy from people, but when I'm in a bad state and like in a relationship, you're having arguments and problems, I need to be alone. For me, you know what helps? Sleeping. I find a way to do something calm and then try to sleep. And I feel like the time that I spend asleep, when I wake up, it helps a lot to almost like reset I don't know sure. if it, it resets your chemistry, it resets like your mood. Sometimes it's bad, to be honest. Like if I'm gonna be frankly honest, sometimes you Please. wake up and mm -hmm. if you didn't, if you weren't able to really sleep and you were just tossing and turning right. and like you didn't really get rest, then you wake up and it's even worse. Or if you try to do it, like sometimes I would, like you know, my work is also very stressful. Right. So when you combine stress in your work life and stress in your Dating life life, life. Yeah. all of that combined I'm a very emotional person yeah. I work with emotions I'm a filmmaker I tell stories yes. my job is to find a way to make you feel sad make you feel happy make you feel inspired so that is my tool but it's also really hard because anything that affects my emotions then affects my work and affects my relationships so I have found that if, if sometimes you just need like a 30 minute nap and I do it sometimes in the middle of the day I just go and take a 30 minute nap, reset, then get a cup of coffee, and then try to use elements around me, like going to the balcony, hit it, hitting some sunlight, seeing the sunset, playing some music that takes me out of that state, that helps a lot. And you know, it's interesting because sometimes when you have a different perspective and you change your mind state, everything then it becomes less problematic there's a lot of content in online about like break up and do this and do that i think what you were saying of the identity that's probably something that i haven't heard a lot because that determines how you move in life towards other things so what do you think is something that especially young guys could do to work towards that identity and develop that to really cultivate your self identity, you're gonna need to, you're gonna need to write down on a piece of paper or even type this up and just talk about who you are. I think, first of all, you definitely need some professional guidance on this. It's not just so easy to say, okay, what's my self identity? Having someone who has been through it and has been coached by other people before, like this is information passed down to me. Like I didn't, I didn't know about this growing up. I didn't really realize. Even in my own past relationship with my ex, I lack self-identity in certain moments of it. And I, when I you know, think in retrospect, and I'm not really necessarily disappointed at myself for this. It's more so like, hey, I didn't know the information at the time. And now I know going forward, it's helped me really understand my mark in this world. So for someone to go over it, I can give some like basic questions. Like, first of all, like, what's your, what is your, what are your boundaries? I think that's pretty standard. Like, what are your boundaries? And by knowing what your boundaries are, you're not gonna accept disrespect in any element of your life, whether it's your work, whether it's your family, your friends. I think it's fair to say that we have, I'm, I mean, I'm speaking on my, on my behalf, but I think even you, Axel, like you had to cut certain people out of your life that were just not serving and benefiting you of any value whatsoever, right? And I, for me, I have to cut you know, close friends I was with, I had to cut uh, just ties with some people. It just, it just didn't, feel that it was within the mission like what was my mission in life so essentially cutting off people out of your life that no longer serve your life's purpose and mission is going to help you have a peace of mind it's going to help you with being able to discover your self-identity because here's what happens like people's self-identity is constantly under attack by the media by family members and friends who don't believe in their goals and mission like having you know we all know this where families have have pressured their kids to go do something where they don't want to do it. You know, I come from a Middle Eastern family, but my family has never pressured me to do anything like this. But I know in like my culture, being a Middle Eastern man, and also like in other cultures, that they press their kids like, go be a doctor, go be a lawyer, go all do all these things. I come from a successful like family business, but I walked away from it knowing that being in the family business 
was just not my life's purpose. Like my purpose is to be a coach. My purpose is to go help men all over the world, be a TED Talk speaker, help men overcome their insecurities, build their dating life, help them have abundance in their mindset, with their lifestyle, so they can live the kind of life that truly belongs to them. But it's hard work. And a lack of self-identity also is a result of distracting distractions from other things. So if you lack self-identity, you probably are working at a job you don't like and you're not doing anything about it. If you lack self-identity, you're with a woman that you're dating and she's just no longer the kind of woman that you thought would be correct for you, like she wouldn't be appropriate for you. And if you are lacking self-identity, you're hanging out with guys who just don't serve your, your best interest. And it's interesting that all of these things around you are usually what people would see as the problem. Right. You would say, oh, the person that I'm with is the problem. The friends that I have are the problem. The job that I have, if I only had this job, if I only had this partner, but it all boils down to what do you have that you're building internally. Yes. But that's the hard one to work on. Yes. Because that's the one that is like, it's on you. Yes, and see the thing is Axel, it's not even their fault for you being with them. It's your fault. You know, to the, you know, to whoever's watching this right now, if you are hanging out with people that don't no longer serve you, whether it's a woman you're dating, whether it's your friends you're with, understand that it's your fault for continually entertaining conversation with them and wanting to spend time with them. You don't need to do that anymore. And I see a lot of people are scared of being alone. My self-identity, see the thing is like when you discover your self-identity more, you learn to be more isolated. And I don't mean this in an unhealthy way. I'm very social, like I love to network. Like Axel, when I met you again from our first podcast, yeah. we are talking about how we met. Yeah. I wanted to talk to everybody at the party. And you know, thanks to me being a conversationalist and wanting to genuinely know Axel, I'm on this podcast now, so it was it manifested for us to work together. I would say that I isolate myself, but I do it in a very healthy way. I do it with people that are just really deserving my time. You, uh, Abraham, and just other people that are associated in your circle. Like I, I when I see like your friends, I'm like, oh, this, these guys are like high caliber people because like Reggie, for example, like high caliber thinker, great guy. He's you know he's just he's he's just a very forward type thinker, solution oriented mm -hmm. men, and that's the kind of men I want to be around. And I've had friends, I've had family say, Cameron, don't you miss like hanging out with these guys like back when you were in elementary school, middle school? I'm like, well, you know, I have respect for some of the some of them, but I don't miss them. Like, I do not. Yeah. And I'm and that's, leaving. That's normal. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, a signal that you have grown. It's very easy for me to see how that has changed in my life. In my case, I, am, I grew up in Cuba, came to America. So when I was 21, all of the people that were around me they were not anymore, right. sadly. But at the same time, it was interesting and it taught me how to just go out and find new connections, new people. Yes. Something that is interesting is that it doesn't matter how bad you feel in the moment when you're going through a separation, either friends or a partner, eventually, and sooner than you actually think, you will feel yourself again without that person in your life and you will find other people that will complement who you are now as a different person from who you used to be. Absolutely, and here's the thing. It's, you're 150% accurate with that. But the problem is, is that a lot of people, they just, they, they live on the surface. They don't think deeply about what is causing them to still hang out with those people. Because see, Axel, I've heard that information prior to me trying to discover my self-identity. I was always, I knew like, oh, you know, you're the average of the five people you're hanging out with. You're the six person average of the five people, whatever the, the quote goes, the saying goes. But what I realized was that when you just, again, like you don't know who really you are, like who, who is Axel Arzola? Who is Cameron Hashemi? Who are, like, who are we, right? When you really don't dive deep into it, what ends up happening is you still get lost. You still end up entertaining all bad habits or people that just no longer serve you. So I think for me, you got to like another question, the, you know, for the audience that's watching this or the men that are watching this, the question you can ask yourself is like, what's your definition of masculinity? So being a masculine man is important. And I think whatever your definition of masculinity is, you should go pursue that. I have my own definition and whoever is watching, like, you know, you should go pursue what you feel is masculine within your, within your parameters. I think by you understanding what masculinity is, which like for me, I'll define it. Masculinity is a man being able to do whatever he wants to do and going after what he wants and knowing his self identity knowing his like his 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 boundaries knowing that by he is a creator of his own world 
it's very individualistic. But I also look for harmonious relationships with people too. I look to provide value with people. I don't look, yes, I am selfish, but I look to connect with people that can help build the image and the brand that I'm looking to build for myself. And I give respect to those and I give value to those who give respect and value back to me. So how do you think guys should act when they get dumped? Let's just get into like practical sure. advice. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, Cause that's a pretty terrible like feeling to have and situation to be on. So right. what's your take on that? That's a great question, Axel. So to get over a woman dumping you, you pretty much want to, you want to understand that she has moved on from you. Now, if she respectfully has broken up with you, look at that as a blessing that she has been upfront and direct and honest with you, right? So if she's upfront, honest and direct, that is a great way for a woman to really just let you know, hey, I'm, we're, we're severing ties and I'm ready to move on and I wish you all the best as well. So I think men have to understand whatever the circumstances, whether you get ghosted, whether she just randomly like throws your stuff out, whatever happens if you guys are living together or not living together, don't get emotional. Do yeah, that's, that's not really hard, get emotional. Yes, it is, Axel, but you know what? As men, we tend to be more logical creatures. We can't be, we can't let our emotions get the best of us. And here's why, because Men that get emotional are very dangerous. Yeah, very that's dangerous. what I was gonna say, because we're very logical, yes. but then when we get emotional, it's like we only have the one emotion. It's like, sink and destroy. Yeah. So unless there are some other people, maybe like maybe their problem is they go into a depression. Because I think it goes like this. You get super emotional in a more aggressive way. And I don't mean like hitting or anything like that. It's just it like- It happen though. Yeah, yeah, it can guys happen. That do that. It can yeah. happen. That yeah. that's one of my fears. That mm -hmm. was actually one of my fears mm -hmm. because I have a history in my family of that, and oh, I was wow. always afraid of becoming that person. And that was one of the reasons why I also decided, like, I don't want to ever get to that point. But I'm afraid of that, if I'm being completely honest. Sure. And I think you get that shot of anger, and then what comes down is just deep sadness, and that one is really hard to to get out of. Because, I mean, if you the anger doesn't last very long, but the sadness lasts a good while. It's important. Like my mentor, he told me, make sure that you live your life on a daily basis. Whether you're happy, whether, whether everything is like, whether everything is consistently great for you or whether you're going through a breakup, you have to go live your life. Now, so like reset every morning? Oh, absolutely. So when I broke up with my ex in Mexico, I was, I immediately went out that night. I went to a salsa dancing a club that was in you're Tulum. crazy cameron oh absolutely that's who i am man i'm, I'm very crazy. much like going out there like i'm very resilient i i pride myself in my resiliency do you feel like that could also be seen as like to me that feels strange i guess it's because sure. that's not i wouldn't do that mm -hmm. i would i would do the opposite i would especially if it's someone that matters to me it's like you shouldn't go and just like go out mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? Well, I know myself. So when I say I know myself, I pride myself in knowing that I'm not going to go out and go crazy and be harmful, like self-destructive to myself. Okay. I'm more self-destructive. And when I mean self-destructive, like for example, I tend to binge eat. I'm in a lot more in, in control of it now because I've just made smarter food choices. I know my body better. See again, self-identity. Yeah. So I'm really harping on self-identity because now I control my binge eating more. I don't have late night cravings. I don't order DoorDash at 2 a.m. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm just more in control of myself. So when I went out that night, I still had the, the, the willingness to go and meet new people. So Were you like, screw everything, I'm gonna like talk to women now? And like oh, absolutely, and absolutely. I was on the dating apps, um, which is very active in, in, I was on Bumble, I was very active in Mexico. So I went, went out and did my thing. And for me, see, I, if I were to put myself, and, and, you're, and I respect your opinion. I'm saying this for all the guys out there who are thinking probably the same thing that you said, right? They're thinking, well, Cameron, like what about how others will view you? I'm not saying you think that, but for mm -hmm. other men out there who think like, what, how would others view me if I went out and I started like, let's say posting content that I'm out immediately after my breakup, right? What are they gonna think about me? Well, again, I'm very individualistic and I'm, I'm caring more about myself identity because at the end of the day, like above anything else, it's me. And I 100% agree with that mm -hmm. part of it. Mm -hmm. I think you should never live for someone else. You need to like live for yourself. Right. To me, I would just feel strange, but it's just we're different people. Like, absolutely, I would just need time to like be alone. Absolutely. Yeah. Also, I'm thinking of like this me. I'm thinking, what is the other person 
like what is my partner going to think if they see me doing that but it also comes from like part of my traumas and my history and, and my story where the person that I was with was accusing me of like oh you don't want to be with me so you can go and do x y and c it's that like, was my breakup also it yeah. was literally it wasn't that the main thing but that was very yeah. similar but go ahead for me it was like no like mm. i don't have a desire of doing x y and c like you think and that's actually showing me that you don't even know what i really want right. like i'm telling you what i want right and it's not that i guess i can see the point where for you if that is what helps you bring back like who you are mm -hmm then you have to do it just as long as you can find a way to do it in a respectful way i guess so you don't because i'm trying to think of the other person sure well here's the thing so even so for those for those that are thinking oh you know am i doing this out of disrespect well you got to understand like if you know who i am i go out and i socialize with people even during like after breakups or when i'm in a relationship it's normal mm -hmm. it's second nature to me yeah being out networking and socializing i love it so the thing is like after I've broken up, I, here's the thing. When I broke up with my ex, it was a very respectful breakup. I was very, like I was, I was, I'm gonna be honest, I was in a bit of tears from the moment. And it made me, it was really hard for me. I thought, I told my ex, I'm like, yeah, I thought we were gonna get married. I thought we were gonna have kids. Like this was, but it's just crazy how, how, you know, how things have just, you know, changed so quickly. But for me, I realized that if I just wallow in, and tears and fear and and care so much about how she's thinking see it was funny like I feel like I compromised myself a lot in throughout the relationship I felt like I lost myself I didn't I feel like I overly accommodated my partner all in the name of making sure she was happy so when you have lacked your own happiness in such a long time in a relationship well, what do you have to do opposite of that the opposite is to go live your life the way you intended it to even though we broke up and even though I went out later that night, what I what I realized is, okay, when I'm leaving, I'm not gonna call her names, I'm not gonna be disrespectful, I'm not gonna just, you know, I'm not gonna do something that's gonna like physically abuse her. I'm not gonna do anything like that. I'm just gonna like pack my bags, get my stuff, get an Air, another Airbnb and just move out. And you know, it's funny, like even after we we, we split, we got, I, I got in my, my, before I got into the taxi, we gave each other one more hug, one more kiss and we split. I said goodbye to her dog and you know, I miss that dog so much. And then like we split and like after that, I just went to my Airbnb and moved on. And then when I flew back to the States, she's like, she told me before I got on my flight, hey, please let me know when you land in the States. So we, re we really, we, we ended it in the most harmonious way we could. I believe in just under going through the breakup process, whatever you feel is the best way to live your life. If you feel hitting the gym is the best way to live your life, go to the gym. Even if it's that 10 o'clock at night and you just broke up like in the evening, go to the gym. If watching a movie helps you get your mind off it, go for it. And I like that you brought sleep previously in our, in our episode, but I wanna say something about sleep. So there are a lot of guys who take advantage of sleep and they will sleep for hours on end. I'm not talking about a healthy dose of sleep. I'm talking about like they stay in their bed, they have like, they you know, close the drapes, they turn off all the lights and they like literally isolate themselves in darkness. And when you think darkness, you don't think, oh, it's positive and everybody's <laughs> out there like jovial. You think darkness is a negative thing, yeah. right? And if, if I'm like shutting down like all my like drapes and stuff and I'm making it completely pat, uh, pitch dark at like 2 p.m., I mean, that's not healthy, yeah. right? Taking a nap, it's healthy. But I don't think you should take a nap for like three, four hours. Like a 30-minute nap, like you said, is very healthy. That's totally mm -hmm. fine. And I take naps all the time. But mm -hmm. again, it's, 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 it's all in moderation. So me living my life was going out that night and, and I like to socialize. And what is salsa? It's social dancing. It's partner dancing. So for me to go out and meet a new woman to go social dancing with, because my partner, she wasn't, I mean, she liked to dance, but even when we were together in the relationship, we didn't dance a lot together. So, so I missed that. So I was like, I need to go out there and go dance with somebody. I missed it. So, and plus I'm in Mexico. I'm not going to be in Tulum the whole time for the rest of my life. I mean, let me take, live it to the fullest. So whatever it is that you feel is the healthiest way to break up with your partner post breakup, remember any activity you want to do, don't make it self-destructive. Be careful of how much you're sleeping. Like don't like just get all depressed and close all the blinds and yeah. you know sleep for hours on end. Just really be careful. Um, you know don't do don't abuse drugs and alcohol. Just really really be careful about it. But because I'm very resilient, because I know I have PMA, positive mental attitude, I didn't feel 
like I had, I was gonna like destroy my, my myself. I just knew that I need to be free. I felt like a trapped bird in a cage that was ready to be free. And yeah. That's how it moved on for me. Talking about that, like feeling trapped, what do you think guys can do to avoid feeling like that? Because that's something that happens to a lot of people and sometimes you don't even realize until it's almost too late. I think it's really just context-based. So when you say trapped, I mean, let's talk about like, I guess we can reflect on my situation. I felt trapped because even though, okay, so subconsciously I felt trapped, but consciously I was rejecting it. I think what I mean by that is like, I knew that there was something going on in my head that I didn't feel right in this relationship. I didn't feel like I had a voice in this relationship. Again, because of lack of self-identity, I, I just started doing anything my girl wanted to do. And I wanted to just say, you know what, it's all about whatever she wants is her happiness because happy wife, happy life kind of nonsense. What do you think that happens? Because I, I had similar things in, in my marriage where mm -hmm. I was doing things to make her happy. And I think it's just a fine line. It's something very difficult because I wanted to make her happy. That was like something that I definitely wanted because that was going to make me happy. Right. But it's almost like somewhere in there you get lost where you're doing things for the other person. And I think it happens to the other partner too. Like they're doing things. And it's almost like this dance in the darkness where you are doing things that you don't want to do to make them happy and they are doing the same. And all of a sudden you're just hitting the wall and they are hitting the wall too because we just got disconnected throughout time and now we're just doing completely different things, thinking that this is what the other person is thinking about and that's where communication plays in. But how do you think you can break that kind of cycle? Well, it boils down to what we've been talking about this whole time, which is the self-identity thing. Because yeah. here's the thing, when you understand who you truly are and you understand your self-identity, from that point forward, what ends up happening is you find out how your partner sees the way you see yourself. Because if you uphold yourself in a specific way, let's just say you're on point with self-identity, like you know who you are, you know your values, your standards, your boundaries, what's the role and responsibility of what a woman plays in your life, what are your roles and responsibilities as a masculine man that you play in her life. If you know the answer to all these things and it's very second nature to you, you then find out that yes, you will be accommodating, but you also know you're not gonna overstep your accommodations. You're not gonna just bend over backwards to the point where it's like, I'm not happy anymore. Yeah. So you know your limits, right? And if your partner, Axel, if she starts to say, well, you know, you don't do enough for me and all that kind of stuff, right? Well, then you know you're probably not, you may not be in the right relationship. You may not be in the right like job. Like if you put in all your work and all your effort into like a company and they don't respect you, they don't see the value in you because that's what my ex also didn't see. She didn't see the value in me. Like I, it's so funny. Like even after we broke up, she sends these messages to me that she's like, you know, she told me, she told me very ungrateful messages. Like you never provide an emotional connection for me. Like she had a lot of like, uh, I guess remorse for like us having to break up because she just felt guilty of something, whatever it was. But she told me, you never gave me any emotional connection, Cameron. And I looked at her, I'm like, my family opened their arms to you. My family took you on vacation, like all expenses pretty much paid. And, and I welcomed you into my home. I welcomed you to, I gave you so much love and compassion for your dog when you were away doing other things, like you're going to your retreats or you're going to your like classes for her personal endeavors that she was doing. I was taking care of her dog. Like that is very, that, where is the gratitude? Where is the compassion? So you gotta, so I think that what everyone has to understand is that if you just, again, you lack self-identity, you lack knowledge of who really truly you are, right? Then you put yourself in a situation where you're susceptible to abuse from people who are, I don't know if it's narcissistic, I guess, or sociopathic, but you just start to like kind of let yourself be vulnerable to the wrong people. So it's so important to be careful of who you give your, 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 your personal life to. And not everyone's deserving of that. It's funny, like, again, I have family that's come up to me and they tell me like, Cameron, you know, why don't you, why don't you be friends with the people from your older generation? And I, uh, from like when you were younger, and I always tell them, well, some of these people that I've known, they no longer serve me because I remember the bling disrespect that they put me through growing up. You think that's gonna change when I'm an adult? No, it's the same thing. If they never treated me, they never treated me with respect back then, unless they literally 
I see like monumental change where like, hey man, Cameron, like I gotta be honest with you, I'm ready to grow from like wh who I was before and I know that I blatantly disrespected you and I don't wanna be like that. I really wanna cherish our friendship. I think then I could see, I could feel the genuine authenticity from them. But again, if you lack knowledge of yourself, you're really gonna put yourself in a dangerous situation. You're so susceptible to a bad boss, a bad girlfriend, bad friends, family members who are toxic and you gotta like sever ties from them because again, they're just not serving your best interest and your happiness. At the day, it's really all about your happiness and people, people tend to really discount their happiness. I think the media, the world, not the world itself, but society has taught people to really just understand that your happiness comes second. That's why things, mantras like happy wife, happy life comes up because you can't, if you're not happy, your wife can't be happy. Right? And that's why like sometimes we were both in these situations, Axel. We were very like, we're very naturally nice people. And one of our draw not a drawback of being nice people, but it's more like a potential threat that can come up of being overly like accommodating, like us, is that we are susceptible to people that are gonna take advantage of it. But for the people, like you and me, when we meet each other, we wanna hook each other up. Information. Um events like networking like we're all about really hooking each other up because we're just genuinely good people and we're value exchange type guys right mm -hmm. so you got to know the difference between like who is the one that's going to give you value and who's the one that's going to take advantage of your kindness and your empathy and you want to be hospitable towards them yeah and that's very tricky now when you were uh, touching on all of that you mentioned text and like receiving this text from this person and mm -hmm. this text for that person i think that's a massive like shit show like at least in my experience, that is almost when the worst of everyone comes out, including myself. I'm really good with words. And if I want to make someone feel hurt, I know what to say in a very eloquent way. <laughs> so what would be your advice uh, for people going through these situations? How should they handle the whole texting, Instagram, social media, all of that? I think we're going to get some good stuff in that right yeah. now, Cameron. This is tricky. Yeah, yeah. So originally when I broke up with my ex, I did not block her. I did not unfollow her. I still kept her in the loop because we had... So here's the thing. We, we had a little bit of a weird situation because we had storage in the... In, like all our storage from our apartment in the States while we were in Mexico. So it was a little bit tricky. So I had to like stay in contact with her just to make sure that she knows, hey, like I moved your stuff for you. That's another thing. Like... You know, I moved all this stuff for her and she was very ungrateful about that too. So it was very easy for me to like say, well, screw you for, you know, I'd move all your stuff for you and it came out of my own pocket and came out of my time. I, you know, I sweated in this heat to like get all this stuff done. And you're not even saying like, you're not being even respectful to me. Right. So I had a lot of things that she put me through and she tried to get into my emotions and a lot of cussing. A lot of FUs, a lot of just really disrespectful, blatant comments that were just meant to hurt me. And my response to this was, look, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to like have us move on from this. I'm trying to have us really grow from this situation so you can have your peace and I can have my peace and we can just move on from each other because we're not meant to be together. And she had, again, like she really felt horrible for how she realized that she didn't really honor my presence and, and respect me the way she should have. So I can understand that like she was going through something, Axel, and I can understand that she was, she was, and, and again, I don't want people to think like I'm just a punching bag where you can literally just cuss at me. I'm not going to say anything. It was a different story for her. Like she was someone I was intimate with. She was someone that I had aspirations to be married to and have children with and have, you know, like live in like, and have a farm and all that kind of stuff. Like that's what we were both thinking for one another. But you know what? It's, it's again, like I don't need to. I don't need to associate myself with negativity as much as possible because I feel like the moments when I was really negative, Axel, and I was very emotional, it just didn't serve me well at all. It didn't serve my happiness because again, I have that positive mental attitude. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to let somebody who doesn't, has not developed what I have ruin what I have developed. That's very interesting. I'm not going to allow someone who hasn't developed what I have to ruin what I have developed. Yeah. That's really interesting. With the whole texting thing and social media and all of that, for me, it's very difficult, Cameron. And what do you think guys can do? Like practical yes. things that they can do. And, and I'm almost thinking of like, what can you do just to protect yourself 
from not screwing up. And at the end of the day, you're hurting the person. Because I feel like when that situation is happening, it's like the worst of you comes out, the worst of that person comes out, and then they're trying the best to be the worst at each other. Right. And that's pro that is probably not a real representation of who any of the parties are. Because this person that you're having this problem with is someone that time before you would have done anything for that person and you would have gone against anyone to be in their camp and now it's almost like you are doing anything that you can to go against them so i don't think it's a, a full representation of who the person is in both sides but at the same time it's, it's gnarly it's hard to deal with Right, so it's, it's twofold right now. The answer is twofold. Number one, definitely, like I said, you have to understand the, the you gotta get into, when we're, okay, so men, we play chess. Women, they play chess very well too. And that's emotions. They know how to get into our heads at times. They know how to trigger us. So if you are having an emotional dispute with a woman, you are playing in her chess game. You are the pawn and she's the queen that's just dominating you every single time. So if you fall into her emotional traps, you've lost. You have literally lost. So when does when do you win in this situation? By separating yourself from the emotions, by realizing that this woman is is an emotional an emotional wreck. She is not ready to speak in a logical, calm manner. So it really again it's based on context. So let's give some practical advice. If you are living with this woman, the best way to do it, Axel, is to get yourself out of the house or apartment Airbnb, wherever you're at, get out as soon as possible, pack your bags, don't say anything to her, and just move on. If this is like, you know, you guys are just being very nasty to one another. If you're not staying with her, you're just living in your own place, and she's being nasty with you, block her immediately. Do not hesitate. Block her. What? Block her. <laughs> that means Instagram, unfollow her, block her. That means Facebook, unfriend her. MySpace, whatever you're on, <laughs> unfollow them. And I know MySpace doesn't exist, but get rid of any contact with her. Block her on your phone. Do everything like that just to immediately block access from her. Because if you guys don't share any storage together, you guys don't share any things together, there's nothing of value to talk about. There's no reason to entertain this anymore. And if you continuously allow this woman to share space and drama with you, you're going to lose because drama is a woman's game. That's her playing chess. You playing chess would be you getting your stuff out of the way, you blocking her, and you just moving on. Because I always tell my clients this, that trauma loves drama. Understand that when you're traumatized, it invites more drama. You must remove yourself from the trauma. You must remove yourself from the drama. And the only way to do that is to go live your life and to move on. And understand that, yes, we can say, oh, you know, there's more fish out in the sea. You know, Axel, hey, you know, you can go find another girl if you wanted to. Like, hey, you over there, like, you can find another girl if you wanted to. There's so much fish out in the sea. Well, what happens when you go on the dating apps and you see that there's not, you're not, you're not getting much matches, right? Then it becomes harder to kind of get over it. So I knew that when I went out in the market, being a single man, I knew that I was going to get results because I'm, I'm a dating coach and I'm a mindset and lifestyle, lifestyle coach. So I know that... If I go on the dating apps, it's going to be popping for me. I know that I'm going to get a bunch of matches. I know yeah. that I'm desired. And it's not just me being externally validated. It's more like knowing that I feel I validated myself by stepping out of something that no longer served me. And I had the courage to do it. I didn't wait. I finally told myself it was time for me to move on. So I validated myself. So now what do I do to reward myself with validation? By getting some external validation, by going out and finding someone who cherishes my presence and is in alignment with the way I think. I can only speak for myself. At least for me, finding women is not a problem. Mm -hmm. Finding attractive women who are interested in talking to me and all that is not a problem. It's almost like it's, it's difficult because then you have more women that want your attention and you have to behave not to like give them your attention. I think the harder thing for me is being able to find a relationship that remains stable so I can do the things that I want to do because for me like I'm not interested in going out and having like three different women and like doing all this like doing the most like I think for me that is easier than actually focusing on one person and trying to build with the one person now it's something that I wanted to ask you about and we have had these conversations before like 
I, I just want to know how you feel about it and, and talk about that because I would much rather have one quality person and build with them long term mm -hmm. than to have multiple people and multiple stories and all that. Now, granted, I tried that and I failed at remaining in the marriage and making that work. So that has completely changed my said ways in, okay, I thought that I was going to be married forever and this was it. Now it's like, I do not agree with that statement or that way of life. If it's an infinite thing where you say, okay, I come into this woman and then forever I have to make it work. I don't agree with that anymore. I think when you take into account the things that you have been talking about with your values, your boundaries, the things that you want for yourself, there should be a way out of a relationship. Even if you're married, because it shouldn't be like chuckles that, okay, because you decided this when you were 22, now for the next whatever decades you're going to live, that's it. But at the same time, when you open the idea of like, oh, it's okay to have different partners and to live throughout life, that also has its own set of complications. Because when you think about it, having short-term relationships, the toll that takes in your well-being, your emotions, your finances, like, all of these things that you go through and you invest into this person and then six months later, now you're not together anymore. So then you have to like reset all of these emotional things that you create, all of this financial things that you like, in, you invested money, you went on trips, you bought her things, she bought you things, she invested time into you. And now all of that just creates a different set of problems. I wanted to talk with you about that take of, do we go for one, partner long term or is it like a four year five year ten, or whatever how many years it lasts and then we transition into someone else or how do you feel about guys that now are just thinking of i want to have like three four girls keep them all entertained have different things from different women like from this woman i get the attention that i want from this woman I get the sex that i want from this woman i might get connections and advances in a career how do you feel about all that well i i want i want men to understand this that it's not just about having a significant number of women there's got to be a reason why you have multiple women you're seeing and always i always preach this for any of my clients or anybody out there who does want to do this you always have to be honest authentic transparent direct with all these women let them know the real deal let them know who you are let them know what they're getting themselves into and there's, there's definitely a way to communicate this. You don't want to do it in a way where it comes off like just weird and strange and uncalibrated. So there's definitely a way to do this. And that's something I help guys with. Again, I, I want guys like my clients to really just achieve the kind of happiness they want. If that makes them having multiple partners, there has, again, has to be a special reason for it. So like you're mentioning, oh, I get attention from this woman. I get a validation from this woman. I get career advancement from this woman. Now, it has to be in alignment with your mission and your goal. Like if you're just looking to get attention from a woman, that's not a healthy way of dating a woman. So if let's just say, if you're at a point now where you're thinking to yourself, okay, I'm not ready to commit to a monogamous relationship, that's understandable. Monogamy, the act of monogamy is something fairly recent. It's not a thing that's been going on for centuries at time. It's just a, literally a very recent thing where they have preached for you to be monogamous to someone for the rest of your life. Yeah. And I think that's honorable too. If anybody wants to do that, go for it. And again, see like the people who are monogamous, here's the, when people, cause here, here's another thing, Axel, people who date monogamously, monogamously, sometimes they date for the wrong reasons too. A man can date a woman monogamously solely for the fact that she has a good physique, she's beautiful and she's good arm candy. Okay, so what difference does it make if I date a girl with three different girls? And I think the same way versus one girl versus dating one girl who thinks the same. I'm thinking, looking at her the same way too. Yeah. So it's all about substance, right? What's the reason? And that's another thing. Another thing is this: like girls, they don't want guys just to go for their body, right? So obviously, if you have approached a woman, she knows you have some physical attraction to her because women, they why do you think they put on makeup? They want to be physically mm -hmm. attractive. We don't need to work well and, and if yeah. you're not attracted to someone uh, like exactly. game over like exactly i think on both sides mm -hmm. i i don't know what women think i have heard that women are more like flexible that the looks are not everything that they look into a man there's other things but for guys i think 100 percent. if you're not attracted but if you don't have some kind of like pull from that woman like what are you even doing 
So here's the thing. It's emotional connection. That's why. Because men, they really tend to look at women's beauty as like a good, a good determinator, a good a way of determining whether she's worth pursuing. But then here's the thing. The guys who pursue just for beauty and they stay on that only, those are the guys who, whether it's dating multiple women at once or whether dating monog monogamously, they just see her for her physical attributes. But they don't even get, they don't dive into her mind. The well, way and, and it's not enough. Like, it's not enough. Just, just the looks are not enough. Like mm -hmm. in my case, the relationships that I've been in, I like the looks, but there's more attractive women somewhere else. Exactly. Like, I, I'm around mm -hmm. attractive women all the time in my industry. There's gorgeous angels from heaven. Yeah. <laughs> but then I'm into this person and I like her smile, I like her eyes, or I like how she talks to me. And then she becomes the one that I'm deciding I could have all of these other women, but I am deciding I'm going to put my time and attention just for you. Well, it's important to also ask, like I have clients who are, have dated women, dating multiple women. I also have clients who have thought about, they've been like one client has dated a woman for about a couple of years and he's never asked her out, but, or to be his official girlfriend, but he, he, you know, he's interested in that. And I said, well, what makes her unique to you? Like what's so special about her that you want to put her in a relationship? And if he doesn't give me like a good logical breakdown of it, that how she's able to be in her femininity, like what is her, what is his definition of femininity in his life? Right? Like that kind of like supportive feminine role that he's looking for, the nurturing, the caring, do you see that you want children with her for example like could you could you see it could you foresee something like this in the future and if he doesn't get any kind of vibe from her that she's not nurturing enough and she's not the type of woman and there's also another thing too like um, there are women out there who don't consider consider themselves to be traditional women and there are women who say i'm modern so and i and this is like i know this tends to go in the controversial side but a lot of like women they see themselves equally as partners to their man I understand equal human rights, 100% okay. Everyone should have equal human rights, man and woman. Whoever you are, you should have equal rights to what a man can do. And as a man, you should have equal rights to what a woman can do as well. But the masculine and the feminine is not equal by default mm -hmm. because guys are naturally stronger than women. Girls, women, they can birth babies. We can birth babies. Yeah. Now, I know that's up for dispute. And <laughs> and, and everything else that's going on. But, well, but I, don't, I don't think that one is up for dispute. Like, yeah. do, you, do you need to have the actual like organs to be able to have a baby? Yes, yes. If we're going on like biology, right? Yeah. And then also women tend to be more nurturing than men are, right? Now, um, I know there are like, for example, single fathers that have stepped up and they've done a great job raising children. Like they, like I know that men like this exist. And I know there are women out there who had to step into raising children on their own too because their father walked, the, the husband walked out of it or the, the, the baby daddy walked out. So I know this, I know these things exist, but if we're talking about a harmonious, um, a harmonious relationship, if the man understands his self-identity and stays within his masculine and he's able to, to be honest, authentic, and direct with her, what ends up happening is that masculinity yields greater femininity. Because a man who lacks masculinity, what ends up happening is he starts to create chaos. And what is what do we discuss this already? That women already live in a state of chaos because one day they're happy, one day they're not, one day they're depressed, one day they're not, and so on and so forth, right? There's so many things that go on, but a man tends to be more consistent in who he is, emotionally at least, right? But a strong man with his emotions in check is not gonna do those things where he's gonna argue with his woman all the time, right? He's gonna say, hey baby, listen, like let's let's take a break from this for a moment. I'm gonna go take a walk outside, I'm gonna go hit the gym. Let's talk about this in a few hours, right? He's not gonna entertain any kind of like emotional uh, escapades because then that's gonna just ruin the, the masculine, the feminine paradigm. So if she can see like, wow, my man was able to control his emotions because I know I'm naturally a woman and I know that I can sometimes be a certain way around him, but the fact that he was able to control himself, it makes me respect him even more. Yeah, that's really hard though, at least for me personally, controlling sure. my emotions in a dis distress moment is very difficult. Ego has to do with it a lot. Yeah. And I'm a creator just like you, man. Like yeah. I'm a very, I'm a creator. I tend to be more of an emotional man too. Mm -hmm. So that's both something like yeah. very similar that we share. Yeah, and I've gotten better. And yeah. in my case, it's not 
ego is actually like when the other person tells me that it's my ego that makes me more upset because it's not like if if it was really my ego i would tell you yeah my ego right now but like i'm not a person that in any other area of my life moves in an egotistical way um, i'm very open to like having other people like lift them up and have them be the the number one for me it's just like it matters to me because again it, i think it goes back to the fact that i'm not entering relationships with people that i don't care about so when we have a problem i do care really about that person and about that topic and i'm also like stubborn and like i love to argue cameron and i'm very good with words so it gets the best of me and it's something that i've been trying to get better at and definitely have gotten I think that I have gotten better lately, but it's definitely challenging, so. Well, let's talk about the fact that you like to argue, debate, right? So mm -hmm. I'm that kind of person that I will at times want to prove someone that I know what I'm talking about as mm -hmm. well. Like, let's just say, not necessarily with the, well, it depends, like, if we're talking about the context of like dating women, I knew that there were certain moments that things were just out of like context and they were out of character. And I knew that what my previous relationships or women I've dated, they just, in that moment, I don't believe they don't know what they're talking about, right? You remember, we are men born and raised as men. We were not meant to be emotional uh, like creatures. To be, see, to be a master of your domain, truly be a master of your domain is to, like you are a, you, you are a filmmaker, right? And even deeper than being a filmmaker, you have these like set of mind, like a mindset that you live by, a code that you live by. Dude, I've been in your, like your, I've seen in your room, you have like, all this motivational stuff. And I see like in Abraham's room, he has all this motivational stuff. That's your embodiment. And you guys go do what you want to do. You are very disciplined in who you are. You don't go out and party all the time. I know you guys, like I've invited you guys to come out. You're like, hey, we're gonna waking up super early in the morning. We're gonna go like box with Reggie at like 4 a.m. <laughs> and then we're gonna go hit a zoo culture gym at like 6 a.m. Like you guys are disciplined. That's an embodiment of who you are. So when you start to veer away to the negative stuff, you're not yourself anymore, dude. That's what I'm trying to say. Like for all those guys out there that like they start to veer away from their their identity and you start getting to that emotional trap, whether it's man or woman you're arguing with, now you have lost yourself. That's why for me, I'm very, I have a good, very, I think it's a matter of having like very low tolerance. So low tolerance for nonsense. That's why I was able to cut a lot of people. Like I unfollowed a lot of people on my Instagram that no longer serve me in any yeah. way. And I had like one of them, I remember this one guy actually reached out to me and he said, Hey man, I noticed that you unfollowed me. I think you have some like issues that you should go see because you're like disconnect. I thought we were like friends and stuff like that. I told him, listen, he wrote me a message, text message. I sent him a voice message. I'm not afraid to like con confront about the situation. Yeah. I didn't yell, didn't scream, didn't say, no dude, you're wrong. I didn't say any of that. I said, listen, man, I wanna let you know. And this is by the way, literally after my breakup, not literally after, about a week after my breakup, I got on the voice messages, we're on Instagram, and I just sent him a message saying, listen, you and I, we had good time spent together. We were friends for a while, but when I think in retrospect of all the times we've had together, a lot of the negative moments I had with you, it really impacted me in a way that it stained the way I, I perceived you. Mm -hmm. And I don't feel being friends with you any longer serves my personal best interests. Now, I know you're a good person, you know, just deep down you are. I know your family. I know everything, like nearly everything about you. You're meant to be with somebody, friends with other people. I'm not the kind of person you want to be friends with. We just don't see eye to eye in a lot of things about life and everything. So yeah. for that reason, man, that's why I unfollowed you. Thank you for bringing, thank you for sharing your thoughts. But um, let's just separate from one another because we're not meant to be friends for long term. Yeah, that's very respectful. For me, I follow very few people. And it's just because of a matter of attention. Like I don't want to have things on the feed that take my attention because I already spend enough time as it is. And that's something kind of tricky. I don't really know. I'm kind of weird like that. I, every now and then I just go through and like on my list. And if I haven't had an interaction with that person in a recent time and there is no like real need or if that person isn't really using the platform or like their post was like six months ago then i'm like unfollow i think that's very fair man and i honestly think people should go and unfollow 50 percent of the people that they follow currently just cut out 
everything that is not top priority from your life because that space needs to go to what is actually the priority. Yeah, absolutely. So even for me, I, I have ex-girlfriends. I have girls I've dated. Oh, you're crazy, done. Cameron. I have, <laughs> I have ex-girlfriends. I have girls that, never, that I don't see anymore. They still look at my stuff. And guess what I did? I blocked them all. I have three different Instagram accounts. I have the Grand Mail, I have Coach Grand Cam, which I post all my reels, and then I have my personal uh, Instagram account, which it's the Grand Cam underscore. Now, when I created my other two accounts from uh, the Grand Mail account, I realized that that I still had ex-girlfriends and girls that I've dated on a, you know, we had a short uh, fling with one another. They still watch my stories. But when I reach out to them, they would never respond to me. So I said, what's the point of this? So I said, look, I don't want you to even watch my content because you're not even providing value. You don't, you don't provide engagement. I'm not making money from you. I'm not like, you're not a client of mine. Like, that was crazy. Cameron's yeah. like, I'm not making money from my ex-girlfriend. So. <laughs> yeah, you look like you don't provide any value of any sort. I'm you're trying to think, like, you don't help me make money. You do not, all you do is watch my stories, but you don't buy my products. You don't, you don't spread word of mouth. Like I never, no one ever told me, hey, your ex-girlfriend told me about you and I want to work with you. Like no one, that's, that doesn't happen. So I'm like, why am I going to give them free attention like that? And women benefit off attention. I know I'm not giving them directly attention, but it's, it's really then, it's, it's more of a subconscious thing as well. It's more hmm. of like me consciously making a decision to better serve my subconscious in a very peaceful way. Because if you know what happens when you start to see ex-girlfriends and girls you used to date watch your stuff, you start to think, you start reminiscing of the past. And then you start to validate, well, maybe I should go back to her. And then you start to like veer away from inviting new women in your life that are actually deserving of your time. And they're ready to meet the new you. Because you know that ex-girlfriend that you had or the ex-wife that you had? That woman has, has a limited version of who you are. She doesn't know like what you're up to nowadays. She doesn't know your mentality has grown from, from now, for like up until now. So why entertain these women anymore, right? So I blocked all my ex-girlfriends. That I feel is more healthy than feeling like, oh, let me get validated because my ex-girlfriends are watching me. Look how cool I am. You know who I'd rather have watch my stuff? Guys who are gonna pay for my coaching services, guys who are interested in paying for my coaching services, but they haven't made the move yet. Guys who are just yet to discover me. Guys coming from your platform, for example, who are yet to discover me as well. And women out there who don't are not necessarily interested in being intimate with me, but they just like to watch my stuff because they might be a client, or because they are just genuinely interested in my content and they just want it, and they're entertained by it. So I'm okay with like these people, but my ex-girlfriend and like just girls I used to date had flings with, I don't need that. They don't need to watch my stuff. Go, just go watch somebody else. Go find yourself a man. Go spend your time, your time better spent than watching my stuff. Cause again, it affects my psyche and I'd rather live in peace and harmony and not dwell on the past. That's very interesting. Well, Cameron, thank you so much for coming on the show. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the episode, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe and send it to a friend because we're trying to make content that helps people. So thank you so much for watching. Great, man. Thank you, man. That's good. Oh, yeah, dude. That was it was really interesting. Good.